Copyright Disclaimer Under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Non-profit educational personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Viewer discretion is advised. CBS News spoke with the brother of Mayor Yasser Suazo Sandoval, one of the victims. He says he wished he could have stopped his brother from going to work. Moises Diaz was scheduled to fill potholes on the bridge the night of the collapse, but his shift changed. He says his friend Julio Cervantes survived the collapse by climbing out of his truck as it was sinking, adding Cervantes can't swim, and telling us he thought, I'm going to die here. The Biden administration has authorized an initial $60 million to help with the recovery efforts. That is really just a down payment. The final cost will be much, much more than that. The Army Corps of Engineers is not yet ready to talk about a timeline for when the port can reopen because the work is so exacting. They have to get everything off the bottom of that channel. Why? Because there's only about 12 to 18 inches of clearance between the bottom of the channel and the hull of a cargo ship loaded down with containers. Chanel and Vlad. Chris, thank you. And CBS's Camila Montoyo Galvez is also in Maryland this morning, joining us now with more on this developing story. Uh, Camila, we understand we spoke with one of the victim's brothers. Tell us more about that conversation. Shalom, beloved brothers and sisters, Jews and Gentiles alike. Welcome. This is your humble servant, Big Levi. And today is Friday, March the 29th, 2024. And it's currently 12 p.m. noon Eastern Time, pre recorded. Beloved, welcome. Again, uh, please uh, pardon the noise that you are hearing it's the ceiling fan and you might hear in there hear some noise and things because we have cars and kids and stuff like that however we are going to go into this thing concerning baltimore and maryland okay maryland is that what that is baltimore is in maryland right so we're going to go to Baltimore and see what happened here. Because a lot of people already went into decoding this because it's a message. It's a sign. It's a warning. Of course, this is not a warning. This is a threat. Okay. And the same people that were there telling our people when, whenever things like that happen and you say, well, the most I did it, they quickly come and say, no, the elite did it. Well, the elite is shutting down the, the port over there in, in, in Baltimore because they, they, they want to bring Jacob's trouble because they want to bring the, the new world order. So, who own those port? I don't own those port. Do you? And does any of our people, one of those uh, regular folks out there, do you own one of those ports? No, the ports are owned by the elites. Okay, so the elites on the, the port and then now they are breaking the bridge or collapsing them to do what now? So they can bring a better bridge. So they can make a, like a, 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 a good bridge. Yeah, elite like to spend $60 million as a down payment to build a bridge that was working. Okay, a bridge that symbolized slavery. A fellow, okay, try to all right let me see okay we we're not gonna go too much into the the slave report let's go a little bit here baltimore bridge collapse all right <clears throat> excuse me francis scott key bridge okay so some say francis scott was the one uh hang on let me see here Francis Scott Star Spangle. There we go. There we go. Ah. Okay, full lyrics. Let's try to get the full lyrics. There we go. Okay, all say, can you see? 
by the dawn early light, what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose board stripes and bright stars, though through the perilous fight, or er, the ramparts we watched, we are so gallantly streaming, and the rockets glare, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, give proof through the night that our flag was still there. O oh, say, does the star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? <laughs> this thing is talking about the land, it's talking about slavery, the free labor. Okay, when they say the land of the free, it, that's not. It doesn't mean the land where people come for freedom. No, as Dr. Claude Anderson uh, pointed out in Black Label's White Wealth, which we study right here. Okay, hang on. We study Black Label White Wealth and private and our Patreon. Dr. Claude, through the studies, we find out that the well. Freedmen and free labor, the term, the term, the land of the free and the home of the brave, that has nothing to do with the actual term. The land of the free means the land of free labor, the land of slavery, the land where we can come and get some of that free labor. Okay? All right? Home of the brave, that has nothing to do with the actually when you are here, you're a brave man and and, and, uh, uh, and things like that. This is quickly, this is literally referred to us. Okay? Our people. And when the Holy One, of course, destroy this bridge, again, the, the lyrics, it's called a star spangle banner okay let's just you know what i already get this here all right now the word star it can be considered as a star in the sky now we are dealing with astrology of course, the same people that tell us astrology is demonic, it's evil, it's witchcraft, don't look at it, don't do anything. And then now those same people are trying to break this down. The same people that say, well, don't say anything when some big stuff happened, like that uh, uh, ship that got stuck three, four years ago in the Suez Canal, which marked the, the Gentiles' destruction. And people are like, well, that's witchcraft. You, you, you're looking at those things and then you're interpreting them as like a, a dream interpreter. This is, this is illegal in the Bible. And those are the same people that will tell you this is wrong. Stars. They are not talking about the actual little stars that you see in the, in, in, in the Bible. Okay. They are talking about astrology here. Okay. Let's define the word spangled. Let's take definition. Oh, well, meaning then. Here we go. Spangle means decorative with small, shiny pieces of metal or plastic or wearing clothes decoratively. For example, she wore a spangle top of stripe. No, I don't want that definition. Covered with spangle. Uh, should I put spangle here? There we go. That's good. Hmm. A small plate of shining metal or plastic used for ornamentation, especially on clothing, a small glittering object or particle. Yes, that's probably the one that I'm looking for. Stars, the glimmering stars. Which stars they are talking about? They, they're not talking about the actual one that you see in the flag. They are talking about the star of... David, the star of Solomon. The, that's not demonic. 
that's our stuff. When when you say when you say the star, the star of David. Okay, you refer to this, and that's why Ish having his flag, and then they claim it it's theirs. They are not singing about the American flag or the, the, none of that. This it has nothing. They they, they are t singing about the joy of them of having us in in slavery and getting free labor on the home of the gallon on the home of those people okay and then get every single thing forever all right so let's go to the guy name okay francis meaning According to Wikipedia, Pope Francis is the Pope and head of the no, Catholic Church, I, okay, the Bishop what? of Rome and Sovereign of the Vatican City uh, State. Okay, what, what does this thing go to? A anyway, Francis Scott, birthday and death. There we go. Okay, he died on January 11th, uh, 1843. Calculator. There we go. 1843. Let me see how long did he die. 2024. 181 years ago. Of course, 1 plus 8 plus 1 equal 10. Michael and the Miss. And when you listen to those people you will hear all the stuff that they are talking about they are talking about us they, the 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 message is here the science is here okay what does the name francis mean okay the name francis is gender neutral uh, names that means frenchmen frank or free men the land of the free the land of the free labor Another one, you keep seeing the, 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 the name, the word free here. Okay. It came from the late Latin word Franciscus, which comes from the Franks who were named after Francisca and acts they use and battle the names of has Anglo-French roots and is given the people who have migrated from France as well as their descendants. Okay, you guys all know you're not the true Frenchman. You know the true Frenchman where. You can't make this up. Freeman, Scott, well, Francis, excuse me. Francis Freeman, he wrote the Star Spangle. We talk about the land of the free and the home of the brave, talking about the land of the free labor. And this is a signal, a message that the Holy One sent unto us that He is freeing us. Okay, now, what does the name Scott mean? The name Scott is Scottish origin means from Scotland. Okay, that's not the, the there we go. Um, it means from Scotland or Scots and signifies a person whose ancestors are natives of Scotland. It also means a wanderer. For the Anglo-Saxon Scots, the name means Painted warrior, okay, and then you guys are not the Anglo doesn't mean English. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> you say well, Anglo mean English. No, that's not what that is. Anglo mean angel, angel, Anglo Saxons sons of Isaac. Okay, Isaac has two sons, the angelic son Jacob and the demonic son Esau. Anglo-Saxon and Demo-Saxon. You guys are not the Anglo-Saxon. You're not the angelic sons of Isaacs. You are the demonic sons of Isaacs. What you people are really good at, you just take identities, you stole them, and then you put them on you. Oh, we are the Anglo-Saxons, the Scandinavians, the original people of Europe. No, you're not. Painted warrior. No, you're not. A wanderer. Okay? You are not the original angelic sons of Isaac. You are the Demo Saxons, the demonic sons of Isaac. Esau has 12 sons, the 12 dukes of Esau. Jacob has 12 sons, the 12 tribes. 
You are the Demo Saxons, the demonic sons of Isaac. All right. So all of those things are connected. Okay. Of course, a lot of people already went into the whole thing concerning slavery, and they are right. So now let's go into this and then go further and all the numbers and things. Let's enlarge this. The names, the numbers, the signs. What does people are saying? Let's keep on moving. CBS News spoke with the brother of Mayor Yasser Suazo Sandoval, one of the victims. He says he wished he could have stopped his brother from going to work. Hmm. Moises Diaz was scheduled to fill potholes on the bridge the night of the collapse, but his shift changed. He says his friend Julio Cervantes survived the collapse by climbing out of his truck as it was sinking, adding Cervantes can't swim. And telling us he thought, I'm going to die here. The Biden administration has authorized an initial $60 million to help with... Okay, $60 million. No one wants to give $60 million out there just for the sake of to get enough to get $120 million 50 years or 180, 81 years later because they're going to destroy the bridge so they can build it better, so they can bring the new world order. That, that has nothing to do with that, okay? With the recovery efforts, that is really just a down payment. The final cost will be much, much more than that. Okay, this thing would be at least a hundred million or two, three hundred millions to fix. Okay. Army Corps of Engineers is not yet ready to talk about a timeline for when the port can reopen because the work is so exacting. They have to get everything off the bottom of that channel. Why? Why? Because there's only about 12 to 18 inches of clearance between. 12 to 18 inches of clearance. Of course, the 12, number 12 and 18, 12, 12 tribes, us, 18, one plus eight equal nine, destruction for them, protection from us. Okay, we are not making this up. This is actually those people saying those things that the mighty one making them sing. Okay, let's keep on moving. Between the bottom of the channel and the hull of a cargo ship loaded down with containers. Chanel and Vlad. Chris, thank you. Right. And CBS's Camila Montoyo Galvez is also in Maryland this morning, joining us now with more on Okay, this. so she's in Studio 57. 5 plus 7, 12. Again, the 12 tribe, 12 feet. We're still there. Developing story. Uh, Camilla, we understand we spoke with one of the victim's brothers. Tell us more about that conversation. Good morning, Chanel. We spoke to Carlos Alexis, the older brother of minor Suazo Sandoval, one of the construction workers here whose body has yet to be found. Hmm. The two brothers from Honduras shared a meal just this past Sunday, and here is how Carlos Alexis described the last time he saw his brother. When you were talking to him on Sunday, did you ever think that was going to be the last time you saw him? No, no. No. Me preguntan a mí, ¿qué es lo último que te faltó decir? Okay, now, a lot of people were panicking, and a lot of people were fighting and arguing because immigrants, well, illegal, well, they call them migrants. The migrants were invading, they're going to take all the job, they stuff. Look, we already told you, what you're calling migrant, those people are not coming here to step over our brethren. They are not coming here to step over our people. They are not coming here to step over us. At least that's what they think. At least that's what the 83 taught. But a lot of them are coming here to serve their slavery. And a hell of a lot of them are coming here to cleanse the land with the blood. Because their ancestors did stuff upon this land and then they migrated away. A lot of them are dying. A lot of them are coming here and they are dying. Horrible death. You know how horrible it is you fell in a water that you can't swim and then the water is like 40 degrees? Is that what that is? Negative 40 or 40 de or 40 degrees, man. You are freezing. You can't you can't you cannot breathe. You cannot swim. It's too cold. Remember in the book The Apocalypse of Abraham? When Abraham was talking to death, when death come in and get Abraham, and then death was explaining to Abraham the people that die by drowning, the horrible things that they went into. All right, let's keep on moving. 
si yo lo dejo salir, no lo dejo de ir a trabajar. Y mi hijo no está. Ok, so. Alright, let's enlarge this. Ok, Carlos Alexis Suazo Sandoval, which is mean Charles Alexis uh, Suazo uh, San, uh, Set Doval. Ok, this is Alexis Alex Michael uh, Alexander and uh, Sandoval Saint Doval or Saint Duval or Saint, no, it's not Duval, it's Doval. So, yeah, it's, it's in there, it's in the mix. Ok, that's the brother. You know? He, he no, died. Who would have stopped him from going to work Pero, if you had known? Lo hubieras parado. Si hubiera parado. algo, ella a mí me hubiera decía. Lo hubieras parado. Correcto, yo. Son cuestiones que normal el día a día los despedidos. Yeah, it was like a normal day and stuff like that. And then the guy went to work. He didn't come back. You know, they didn't come back. Of course, beloved, we do know all the bridges, all the train tracks, all the highways, all the airplanes, uh, all the airports. And all those things are built on top of ley lines. So with the Michael lines, the the mighty one in the midst, shake these ley lines, and this is what happened. Hoy mañana lo veremos, pero no sabíamos qué se iba a hacer lo último. Pero no sabías, you didn't know. Chanel, Carlos Alexis told us that if given the chance, he would have traded places with his brother. That's how much they loved each other. And one of the other heartbreaking things that Carlos Alexis told us is that Miner's six-year-old daughter, who is really young, still in school, cannot fully comprehend and understand what has happened. She believes, according to her uncle, that her dad is still at work. Oh, Camilla, just a heartbreaking story. And we also know the remains of four construction workers, including those of Carlos's brother, won't actually be recovered until some of that debris is removed. Talk about how difficult this waiting period is for the families and the broader community there. Well, Chanel, one of the reasons that there's so much agony and anguish in these communities and amongst these families in these immigrant communities here in Maryland is that some of them have not received any closure, any finality on these ordeals. All right. Those are the names of all the dudes that didn't make it. We have uh, Meino Yasir Suajo Sandoval. We have Miguel Luna. We have Dolien Castillo Cabrera. We have Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes. And the two other uh, fellow that they, they have not released the name. We already went to the Saint Duval or Saint Duval. Okay. Talking about the scent, talking about us. Miguel Luna. Miguel, of course, which means Michael, which is in the mist. And Luna means the moon. Is that what that is? Let's see. How do you say the moon in Spanish? In Spanish, you would say. La Luna. Okay. La Luna. Okay. The moon, which Miguel, the moon. Okay. Didn't we? we, we do, do we have uh, eclipse? Uh, lunar eclipse upcoming. Ah, Here is great. information from NASA Science. Upcoming lunar eclipse. Here is information from NASA Science. Oh, okay. Um, wow. Let me see. Uh, God, my eyes. Give me a moment here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. We had a lunar eclipse on the 14th or the in the 25th. When is the bridge collapse? What what is this? Upcoming Oh, okay, okay. We had one on the 25th, which is was four days ago, okay? March 25th. Let me see if we are right. March 25th lunar eclipse. Okay, the penumbra lunar eclipse. Okay. When did Francis Cat Bridge collapse? Uh, let me see. Did it collapse? Hmm. Uh, New York will want me to pay. They will want me to pay. Is that what that is? All right, they will want, want me to pay. Okay. CNN, uh, they, they might not be too scummy about it, but anyway. Uh, boy, 
Anyway, uh, the biggest crane of the East Coast is coming to lift up the 4,000 tons of Baltimore Bridge, okay? 4,000, you can say the 400. Um, when did that thing happen? Mm, did it happen on the 25th or before that? Let's go, let's go to the date. When did bridge? When did the the Francis? Uh, 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 uh Tuesday. Okay, I think CBS give us the date. Tuesday was Tuesday was the twenty six. If the if it did collapses on Tuesday, let me see. Oh uh, boy, around one thirty a.m. on Tuesday, Baltimore Francis Cap Bridge collapsed when the cargo ship. Okay, so it collapses on Tuesday, which was the twenty six, and we had a lunar eclipse on the twenty fifth. Okay, you can't make this up. All right, on the twenty fifth. On the 25th, we had a lunar eclipse, and on the uh, on on the 26th, this happened. All right, the name of the ship it's called the Dali, I believe. Uh, uh, Dali. Somebody uh, had told me about the definition of Dali. Let's see what the word Dali mean. What is the definition and etymology of Dali? No, not this Dali. Oh boy. Technology, huh? Okay, all right. The Dali, here we go. The, the word Dali has multiple meanings and origin. A surname from Catalan, possibly from the word Dali, which means stick for fording. The two stick. All right. The, from the Arabic word Dalil, which means sign guide okay if this was a sign it if this is what if this is was a sign for the holy one i don't know what that is a girl's name in spanish which means drawn drawn up of god drawn towards god you can't make this up all those names or things are pointed to prophecy okay from the georgian word dila which means morning and that thing crashing 1 30 a.m in the morning all right from the Ostian word dilemon, which means demons. You can't make this up. A bamboo basket, usually square and shallow, matting or mat of bamboo, stripe of bamboo matting from through the feet board, a sword belt. Anything worn as a mark of defiance or challenge. A dolly. Anything worn as mock of defiance or challenge okay the dali okay remember the dali is the one that crushed into the bridge which symbolized slavery which symbolized a uh, uh, pride which symbolized hey i got the blessing i ain't there the most i challenge you they might even defy you with the dali and send the Dali, in other word, the demon. Send the demon to do this. You can't make this up, okay? From Southern Point of Philippine, Dalik, which means short times, easy. Short time. You, you had a short time in this easy blessing. You had a short time left from this easy blessing. All right? A large tree, Misty, Miristica, Sebifica. Sebifera, I think this is Latin for Miristic Sebif, growing in Demania, British Guyana, Guyana, a harsh discordance of sounds of or dissonance, a loud boom, which is a plague number ten right here. Is that what that is? Thunder voices and destroying earthquake, which was one of the plague. Okay. A harsh discordance of sounds or dissonance when a, a very bad noise 
when the ship hit the bridge, it made this harsh, dally nose. The thin part that drains a flower, a leaf, or fruit to the plant, a tree, or stalk. And binisaya, an adjective that means easy, quick, faster, come here, hurry, or rush. Man! Isn't that something? Quickly, faster. Quickly, mighty one, come and deal with those people. Hurry. Come here, quickly. You can't make this up. That's the name of the ship, the Dali, all right? Okay, that was the name of the ship. And then it crashed on the 26th. And then the 25th. We had a lunar eclipse, which this dude, Michael, okay, Michael Luna, Miguel Luna, caused the lun lunar eclipse and crashed the ship, and then all those things, they are connected. I'm not making this up. I'm not trying to force things here. It's right in front of you. Dolly, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Dolly in Castillo. Cabrera. Well, the word Castillo means castle. You know, Big Levi, they need that 9th century castle. Where is it? St. Michael Castle in France. There you go. According uh, there you go. There you go. Yes, that's, that's, that's exactly what that is. Oh, good Lord, when are you going to bestow upon me the mighty boons? I can't wait to hang my flag there that explicitly said Big Levi, giant mighty boons. Gaze upon it. And the mighty one sent me a, personally sent me a, a, a message here uh, through Mr. Dolian Castillo. Cabrera. Ah, all right. Uh, Sister uh, uh, Lisa right there. A blessing for the sister too or the, the family. Let's see what the name Dolian means. All right. What does the name Dolian means? No, uh, not Dolian. Great. There we go. Now I need a dictionary for names, man. Not image. There we go. <clears throat> the name Dolian is an Irish surname. Man, they keep bringing the Irish and the Scots, the, the Scotsmen. Of, of course, they're talking about the original way. Uh, that is anglicized version of the Gaelic or Gaelic or or O I E L E N is named deriving from Faolin, which is a personal name that is diminutive of foul, meaning wolf. Okay, Benjamin is known as a wolf. Paul, the twelve tribes of the uh, 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 of of Yasharala. Okay, and we have wolf in here. Wolf Castillo, which means castle. Uh, let me see. What does the name Cabrera means? There we go. Uh, the surname Cabrera is Spanish habitation name that comes from the Latin, okay, well, the late Latin word Capra, Capra Ria, which means place of goats. Capra Ria comes from the Latin word Cabra. Which means goats. And just like you got the word chupa cabra. Chupa means soccer. And cabra means goat. Or the goat soccer. Cabrera is the feminine form of cabrero. Which means goat herd. Or, or a shepherd. Or, or um, a, shepherd they, a shepherd they have a herd. It can be a herd of sheep, goat. A herd of um, cattle. Uh, 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 but specifically cabrero means a, a goat herder. And... Uh, um, Cabrera I mean place of goats. Okay, uh, of course. Let me see right here. Uh, Dolian, Wolf, Castillo. Um, uh, uh, Another word, his name literally means Dolian, the Wolf, Castle, the Castle, or the or Fortitude, or Citadel, or, or Defense, or a place of protection. And Cabrera I mean where a bunch of goats or herds of goats or staying or literally it mean the wolf wolf defense castle or the wolf is coming to attacking the goat something like that you know if you can if you have more information hey, put it in the comment board 
Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alejandro, which means Alexander, and Hernandez, I'm not quite sure. What does the name Alejandro mean? Okay, defender of mankind, of course, they are talking about Michael here. What does the name Hernandez mean? There we go. Brave in peace, bold voyager. Okay. According to thebump.com, meaning brave in peace, bold voyager, Hernandez is a boy's given name and surname of Spanish origin, which first became common in the 15th century. All right. Well, bold, voyager, brave, and peace. The land of the free and the home of the brave. And peace. Be at peace. The brave must be at peace. There'll be no Jacob's trouble. Okay, a bold voyager. They are talking about the sacrament right there, for those of you who know. This is the holy sacrament. For those of you that were about to undergo your first voyage, be bold. Of course, this is for those of you that, uh, you know, what that is. Fuentes. What does the name Fuentes mean? There you go. The Spanish surname Fuentes means fountains. It is a topographic name from the plural of Fuente, which means spring, well, water, Holy Spirit, every mother. It may also be a habitational name from any of the any of the place called Fuentes, such as okay, all right, that's they're going to find it. Anyway, this means fountains, okay? So this dude name literally means um, Alejandro, the defender of mankind, uh, bold, brave, uh, bold voyage or brave in peace, and the fountains. This is all code. And the other two dudes, uh, I, they have not give the name of them. And all those guys are migrants, so to speak, or whether they are illegal or illegal migrants, illegal immigrants, whatever they are, and those are the people that people are afraid of. Oh, wait, they're going to take care of... The, oh, those, those people are going to come in the hood, Big Levi, they're going to take all our jobs and stuff. Yes, they did. They take our jobs of being not being no more. All right, let's keep on moving, beloved, okay? And that is because some of their loved ones' bodies have not been recovered from the channel here. And that has prevented them from honoring their loved ones, from holding funeral services, but... Tragically, it has also given them a deceiving and... Okay, one thing somebody was pointing out. Let's look at the ship, okay? Let's look at the ship. Here. Let's look at and the that ship. That has prevented them from honoring their life. Now, the ship is coming over there, all right? Watch it. From holding there is light in the ship. There are lights, all right? Funeral Watch the lights. But tragically, the lights... It has also the lights, given them a deceiving... The, and then the power went out. The power went out. And when the power went out, there's nothing you can do. You cannot steal the ship. You can do... There's nothing you can do. Okay, the power went out. And All right. And non-existent glimmer of hope that we tragically know... Does not right. exist. Those people and we know, probably were you know the, the last financial one. burden of having a funeral can be so large. How are the families handling Ooh. this? And is the public sort of coming together to help Ooh. in any way? Well, a nonprofit organization here in Maryland, Chanel, has already raised tens of thousands of Again, this thing happened in Mary Lynn. The land of the free and the home of the brave. Mr. Hernandez, Brave, all those things are connected. Maryland. Maryland. There you go. According to National Geographic Kids, Maryland is known for fishing and it produces the most blue crabs in the United States. The state is also known for mining coal, clays, natural gas, and limestone. Okay, well, I didn't ask about that. You could have told me the, you know, uh, if Maryland was the original, the 13 states or whatever, 
you know, I believe she was one of the original 13. Well, let's just ask it. Was Maryland one of the original 13 colonies? Yes, Maryland was one of the original 13 colonies. The other colonies were New Jersey, Virginia, Massachusetts, uh, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New Jersey, well, New York. Uh, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, Delaware, and South Carolina, and New Hampshire. Uh, okay, they, they could have put North Carolina and South Carolina together, but anyway. So, that was the original 13 colonies which uh, went straight to a line right there, straight to a ley line right there, okay? The coast right there. Those were all countries, all our places, okay? Wow. Maryland star spangled banner and all that they all connected of dollars to provide assistance to the families of the victims additionally the office of immigrant affairs here in the city of baltimore has set up a separate fundraising effort to raise money for the families of the victims but also the survivors of this tragic incident and that fundraiser is still open still accepting donations it's important to underscore that because so again beloved this happened to the so-called immigrant or migrant let's keep on moving we are also learning Wait, how long we are into this thing good grief all right 40 41 minutes oh man all right let's, let's, let's get you. go ahead and get this out of the way beloved why is this happening what seems to be the issue here what, what is it that suddenly every time you turn on the news you don't even need to turn on the news the news turn on to you and it's always a tragedy. And who get involved with this thing? Those folks. Why? Because Genesis 15 verse 13. And he said unto Abraham. No of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. And they shall serve them. And they shall afflict them 400 years. And a land, land, land. Fuentes, fountain. Brave, the home of the the, the, the the land of the free, free labor, uh, the slave, you know, again, uh, all right? land, land, merry land, 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 Baltimore. Oh, wait, we didn't, we didn't describe Baltimore or define Baltimore. Uh, what does the name Baltimore mean? Okay, Baltimore, town of the big house. Uh, Engle man, they keep bringing the Irish in there. The hell is gonna go over there in Ireland, okay? Which means town of the big house was the big house, and which house they are talking about? The house of Israel, uh, not the ish over there in that land over there. It's this house over there, Ohio. They are talking about the big house, okay? Ohio, Boyo, Ohio. Boyo is Haiti, which means little house, big house is the United States. Or the fourth, from north to south pole. That is not theirs, and it shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And we are now in Genesis fifteen, verse fourteen, and also that nation whom they shall serve, Malal George. That's where we are right now. This is a judgment. This is a sign. This is what's going on. Okay. Again, beloved, if you wish to know those things, you can come and study with us, a freed man and free labor. Uh, what is an indentured servant and Washington uh, fathered the country and uh, raping a bunch of slaves okay the the gravis and above from the quantum explorer the bridging that went to the quantum realm and met those angelic beings and uh, adventurers and artists uh, explorer become God Christopher Columbus and some some of the beautiful images uh, if you wish to have them you can uh, go ahead and check them out okay we have all those think this is a depiction of dina uh jacob uh only daughter which made us so to speak the 13th tribe they like to talk about okay uh depiction of leah the mother of the six other tribe If you like to get all those things, a depiction of Miriam or Mariam, the sister of Moses, 
okay if you would like to get some of those pictures you can join our patreon and sign up for studies private meetings private breakdown private lesson this is a depiction of uh, miriam or mariam the sister of moses all right beloved let's keep on moving and the link is in the description is patreon <coughs> excuse me it's patreon big levi all right let's keep on moving beloved okay New details about the victims of this tragedy. Six construction workers who were all pursuing the American dream. Ah. CBS's Nicole Skanga spoke with a local pastor who knows the families. All right, let's see what the local pastor is saying. A Baltimore City landmark, now a personal tragedy. These were fathers and these were sons and these were husbands and these were people who their families relied on. We've determined the countries of origin of those that are presumed deceased on to be rest. Mexico, Mexico, Guatemala, Guatemala, El Salvador, El Salvador, and Honduras. and Honduras. Miguel Luna, a father of three, was originally from El Salvador. The 40-year-old <laughs> left for work at six. Okay, he was 40 years old. 6:30 p.m. to fill potholes on the key bridge. He's supposed to come in the morning, uh, back home, and never come. Menor <laughs> Yasir Suazo Sandoval. Okay, look, look at look at this dude taking a picture next to. Well, some somebody that they said, okay, well, usually it, 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 his ancestor or white folks will claim it when there's a check there, when there's a monthly stipend, they'll say, oh, we are that guy. But you can see the huge flat nose and full lips. But anyway, let's let's keep on moving. Now, this is this is poetic right there, man. The owner of the land, those guys. Anyway, Val would have celebrated his 35th birthday next month. He believed in giving back and donated to a children's soccer league in Honduras. All right, so he was 34. He did die. You know, three plus four, seven. The other dude was 40. Perfection, seven, 40. The 40-day 40 fast and all the things related to the 40. His brother prays his body is found so they can bring him back to be buried. We know that they were hard workers. We know that they love soccer. We know that they love, you know, their families and the community. Jesus said, call no one good. Um, but these were good men. Ah, so you're violating what Jesus told you to do. Uh, it is always, beloved, somebody that look like us. We have nothing to do with this. But they got to bring one somebody that one of us, bring it there, say a few words. They could have easily find one of those uh, immigrant Spanish pastors saying whatever. Those guys went to church. They could have easily go to that church and let this guy talk only. But they have to bring somebody that look like us and say, hey, say a prayer. Get the Hebrews over there so we can suck up their blessing again. Have them praying for us. Their walker has been mourning alongside families. My advocacy and is that we, we, we don't abandon these families, that we, we come together as a, a Baltimore community. There you go. We got to come together, man. We got to come together. Hey, Big Levi, the other dudes, let's come together and pray. Oh, hell no, son. We gonna come together for suddenly now together. We we gotta come together. Nah, 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 nah. A community these men loved. This bridge was a symbol of America. We feel ah, so proud. It was. It was a symbol of America. I mean, this is the Star Spangled Banner. The dude Francis Scott. It. <clears throat> All these things, beloved, they are <clears throat> symbolic, and of course. <laughs> We're not going to sit there and say the, the death of those people, you know, symbolic. Or it didn't happen or it was just um, something that happened by accident. It, it, it is for real. That they trust us to reveal, to repair this beautiful bridge that have a huge history hmm. in our nation. And ah. that is an example of our contribution. Ah. Tuesday's bridge collapse marks the second time in one year construction workers were killed on the job along the same highway in the city of Baltimore. Last March, six highway workers were struck fatally by a speeding car. No okay, it seems like last year, six of them were died. This year, six again, six plus six, six plus six. You know what to do. Let's keep on moving, man. 
or first thing this morning, many of us immediately thought of, well, the Sunshine Skyway Bridge, of course. That disaster back in 1980. Here's some Fox 13 <coughs> time. 35 people were killed when that freighter hit the old Skyway Bridge 44 years ago. Now, many, of course, have never stopped talking about it because it had some, such an impact on so many people, the lives lost for sure. And the harbor pilot who was in control of that ship, he, too, never got over it. Let's bring in our Fox 13's Lloyd Sowers now. Lloyd, why do you think that is still so etched in our minds, and what changes have come since then? Well, Ali, when you drive over the new Sunshine Skyway Bridge, you see those round bumpers around that bridge, supports, they call them dolphins. Uh, they came along with other safety measures after that nightmare in 1980 on an old, unprotected Skyway Bridge. Every time you drove over that old bridge, you were taking your life in your own hands. Bill DeYoung was 21, living in St. Pete in 1980 when the freighter Summit Venture hit the old Sunshine Skyway Bridge, killing 35 people. It could have been any one of us, you know. It could have been me going to Bradenton to visit family that morning. But DeYoung says for decades there were conflicting reports on how it happened. He researched and wrote a book that goes back to the bridge's beginning. When the first skyway was built in 1954, hmm. what they had for protection against ship strikes was a series of two by fours nailed to pilings. So oh, when boy. Summit Venture hit the Sunshine Skyway Bridge, there was no protection at all. When the new skyway was built, opened in 1987, the state spent $44 million on bumpers to protect the bridge from ships. And there was something else about the Skyway disaster. The talk concerning the harbor pilot who was in control of the Summit Venture when it hit the old bridge. Over the last 40 years, you keep hearing, yeah, that drunk pilot, you know, he was stoned, he was drunk, he was this, you know, so he wanted to clear his name. Vandebo, along with Steve Yarrett, the attorney who represented harbor pilot John Laro, made a documentary film on the 40th anniversary. On how it happened, and about the court case that cleared Laro. It was ruled an act of God, a quick, fierce storm that led to the collision, not pilot error by John Laro, who passed away, still haunted, talking to friends. He would call them in the middle of the night and say, if I'd just made the turn a little sooner, if I'd done this, if I'd done that, all those years later. All these years later, when what happened in Baltimore takes us back to what happened here 44 years ago. And by the way, the Summit Venture, the freighter that hit the Skyway, finally sank off Vietnam in 2010. All 26 crew members were rescued. Hmm. And we also remember a near miss back in 2007. This freighter carrying phosphate, the Antilles II, suddenly lost its power and steering near the Skyway. The pilot there chose to run aground rather than risk hitting the bridge. So... Again, people, well, the reason why they are doing this, they're trying to tell you, well, what happened over there in Baltimore? It's been happening so many times. It's just an accident. No, it's not. You keep seeing that those ships keep, they, they just lost power. The moment they are about either passing the bridge or coming to the bridge, and then the power went off. Why? Because the energy of that run through the earth, the, the ley lines and things like that. That's why, that's why this happened. You know? Fortunately, no one was hurt. And think of this. Our local harbor pilots guide more than 5,000 ships a year in and out of Tampa Bay. It's a busy waterway. And we are reminded that as safe as they try to make it, things, things can go wrong, and sometimes they do. And, and it's not easy. People think those uh, to piloting or, or to navigate a ship, it's an easy thing. It's not, man. The sea is unforgiving. <laughs> It's not, man. I had the opportunity to uh, navigate a ship. It was very difficult, very confusing. Whew. It looked easy, especially those giant ships. It's not easy at all. Let's keep on moving. Okay. DD Drug Mule looks worried in body cam. Video showing hours on drug charges. Okay. You know, the guy looked very worried. Uh, it, really? You're getting arrested? You look worried because you're getting arrested? 
Uh, you didn't you didn't look terrified or anything. Well, yeah, well, well. Alright, yeah, All right, so what's going on here? Another you know, distraction those people are trying to come up with here. And trying to uh, distract our people, you know. Their the, the country is going to uh, put that seat bell on you, son, you know. True safe in the back. But anyway, um this thing now they're trying to blame dd for everything that they've been doing again the so-called puff daddy the the r kelly's those dude took the bag man those rappers those richie guys they took the bag they do a lot of stuff i wasn't i didn't even know who the, the, who the hell this dude was i have no idea what those guys are and i'm not going to spend my prayer on them and either anything on them okay and the, the thing concerning uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, Black Jesus. Okay, so um, with the thing about Putin saying things about Jesus and things like that, and uh, the people, they really don't want to talk about it. Okay, no, no, nobody want to talk about it. Nobody want to say anything. Well, well, what Putin been saying? He's just saying the same thing we've been saying. Okay, all right. Oh, I think I... There we go. Amen, oh, amen. Okay, so... Uh, Putin talking about black Jesus, black Christ. We should worship black Jesus and things like that. I don't talk about that because... What what do I need to say? What What is it? What, what, what can... Why can I say it? I've, we've been saying those things. We started... We even have... Let me see if we can find a video. We have videos, lives, going way back where we were showing. Um, hmm, where we were showing. Um, let me see if I can get the oldest of the lives. We got all those lives where we were talking about, you know, three, four years ago, showing the, the Russian icon and things like that. You know, I just really i do not i really don't care and it's thing we've been talking about for years and then now putin is trying to say this to be putin trying to say that and a lot of people are surprised well i, I didn't i didn't know that i didn't know we were uh the black folk or black jesus was the original decent side and stuff putin tried to get his stuff right they're all in the same thing forever you know and uh, just watch this video mini mini take care all, okay all those things are all those things are coming true okay uh we had all this stuff all these things going on i think one of those video they've been removing the videos though, okay uh, started the throne of david and all those things really don't care i mean at least i don't at least i don't because we study all those things we talk about this those people they try to act like whatever that we've been saying is not true up until uh you know the the, the so-called putin the president putin mr putin prime minister uh, they say this and then now suddenly it's it's the truth now suddenly everybody like, well, big divide, man, you're getting some exposure. <laughs> Whatever, man. Let's keep on moving. Okay. We gotta do better. YouTuber Jessica. There you go. And sometimes I catch myself in the mirror and I'm just like, Jessica, we gotta do better. YouTuber Jessica Petway has died. She was 36 years old. Hmm. According to E! News, the beauty influencer's sister confirmed her death on Instagram. Oh. The mournful tribute revealing Jessica died last week. Nearly a year after she first shared her devastating diagnosis, stage three cervical cancer. Oof. The tragic announcement also an explanation for her fans after her prolonged absence on social media. I hope that you, you know, grab whatever you could from this video. I hope you grab some tips. That's Jessica a decade ago in one of her earliest YouTube posts. Her channel kept on growing as she shared beauty secrets and her life at home. As you guys can see, I am rocking a new do. These are crochet braids. So in this video, I'm going to just tell you guys a little bit about my experience with them. 
By 2024, Jessica had over 200,000 followers, plus a massive fan base on the gram. And it's where she revealed heartbreaking details from her cancer journey. Jessica claiming her initial symptoms were misdiagnosed, which made her condition worse as her cancer went untreated. She's bouncy, she's voluminous, she's feathered, she's all that goodness. She said of her health battle, I hope that at least one person is encouraged by my story. Jessica's survived by her husband and two children. Hmm. So, what seems to be going on, beloved? <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of young people are dying. She's young, man. 36 years young, a young woman. Well, she's not even a young woman concerned with the, the, the thing we've been studying. She is a virgin, which means a young girl. A woman is any considering when you when you're a woman when you become 50 years old or older that's when you attain womanhood but anything 50 below you are a virgin a young girl a young woman okay now what we are seeing a lot of young people are just dying terrible disease and and some of some of them they just die in i but this one right here she had cervical cancer and we keep we we stress to our people to check your blood pressure the men don't listen to the doctors that saying well you can't of course they won't do it well you you need to worry about prostate cancer when you're in your 50s no do the prostate uh, cleansing now and go check with your doctor no matter how how old you are check your doctor say i want to check my prostate man I don't want to wait 50. If I'm 36 right now, I need to check my prostate. I need to check my heart. I need to check my kidney, my internal organ, and see if they are working and functioning right. Especially the women. Go to your GE. Check what's down there. A lot of stuff are in the food. A lot of stuff are in the air. A lot of things are with people that we lie down with. <clears throat> okay? So your health is very important. And you see this, man. This is a tragedy that happened here. Of course, she was 36. You know what to do. Hey, we don't know the full story, but we can read the sign. Great glory. Let's keep on moving. Concrete truck who struck a central Texas school bus last week reportedly told investigators that he did cocaine the morning of the crash. Ah. Hi, everybody. I'm Heather Hayes. I'm Steve Eager. It's 9 o'clock. Those reports emerged soon after video was released showing the truck veering into the path of the Hayes Consolidated ISD bus. Ooh. A preschooler on board the bus and the driver of a third vehicle were killed in the crash. Fox Sports Blake Hansen has the latest tonight. Blake. Yeah, Stephen Heather video clearly shows that concrete truck crossing into late the lane of that school bus. The school leaders they are praising the bus driver for reacting and possibly avoiding even more loss of life. The Hay CISD school bus was bringing 44 pre K students and 11 adults back from the Bastrop Zoo last Friday when a concrete truck veered in its path. <laughs> You got little time to react there, man. When a concrete truck veered in its path. Little time to react. We've muted the audio after the collision out of sensitivity to those involved. The crash killed five-year-old Ulysses Rodriguez Montoya, who was on board the bus. Hmm. A 33-year-old man in a third vehicle was also killed. Okay, the Christmas. It seems like those migrants are illegal or legal migrants, wherever those guys are. They are catching a lot of hell out there, man. This week, the district superintendent praised the bus driver's reactions. She was able to take an evasive right and keep the bus from being hit squarely. And I think uh, she saved all the rest of the lives as a result of, of her, her driving ability. <laughs> the video's release came just hours before multiple reports emerged that the concrete truck driver, 42-year-old Jerry Hernandez, told investigators he smoked marijuana the night before the crash, only got a few hours of sleep, and consumed cocaine in the morning before work. The crash happened around 2 in the afternoon. The driver reportedly refused a voluntary blood draw. He has not yet been charged. The hmm. bus involved in the... 10, 12. Michael, hmm. 12, try. The crash did not have seat belts. In 2017, the Texas legislature passed a bill that required seat belts on any newly acquired school buses. 
The district says the bus involved in the Bastrop County crash was from 2011. We haven't gotten the uh, investigation report yet from DPS, and so we'll wait <coughs> to see if seatbelts would have made a different hmm. difference. But um, we are planning on accelerating our timeline to make sure that all of our buses uh, in the future will have seatbelts. I, I won't do anything. It won't charge. It won't stop it. Again, uh, some people were asking themselves, Big Levi, why, why don't you talk about those things when they happen anymore and stuff like that? Beloved, I've done and said everything that needs to be said concerning me. Personally, I'm not interested in telling people, hey, this is going to happen to you or stuff. My mission was to put the nation at peace. There'll be no Jacob's trouble. If at this point right now, someone you want to believe the so-called 83 going to come back in power and take our people and put us in slavery again, another for the Mosai to save us, that's on you. I've delivered the message. Now I am busy studying and preparing myself to receive these great boons. That's all. Whatever's going on out there, those people can handle it. Well, a very warm welcome. There we go. With the good old Dak. Let's take like three good minutes from the good old Dak and then we will keep on moving. All right? Come to this talk in a happy, uh, reflective and contemplative Good Friday. Now, as you'll see, we're still running on somewhat limited technology. We're actually working in Australia with a Professor Robert Clancy, and, and more to come on that over the next uh, over the next few days. Hopefully, but interesting developments. Now, I've been talking to Professor Angus Dalgleish. Now, with Professor Clancy, um, Professor Dalgleish has been one of the clearer thinking minds on this pandemic, and I was just talking to uh, Angus Dalgleish recently on the phone and we've agreed to do an interview on this topic uh, when I get home. But um, there's something I want to bring to your attention and it's an article, again this is fully referenced, I'm going to give it all to you, it's by Angus Dalglish, a professor of oncology, one of the most uh, senior physicians in the country actually. And, and he's written this article, mRNA vaccines must be banned once and for all, in the opinion of Professor Dalglish. Now, let's see what his rationale for this is and see if it makes sense. Now, um, he says this, and we reported on this in some detail at the time and recorded a video with Professor Dalgleish on this. At the end of last year, I reported I was seeing melanoma patients, that's the skin cancer, but it causes spreads all over the body. Melanoma can kill you actually really quickly. I've seen patients die of melanoma in months, not years. But Professor Dalgleish has been keeping his patients alive for five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years, I believe. Quite remarkable success in oncology. So at the end of last year, Professor Dowgley said he was seeing more melanoma reactivation, seeing melanoma patients who have been stable for years relapse after their first booster. That's the third injection. And he also says in this article, which I'm going to give you the reference for, the number of my patients affected has been rising ever since. So stable melanoma patients, cancers reactivated after the booster. Now, if Professor Dalgley says this, this should be taken seriously. And all we need to say there's no problem here is for the regulatory authorities to stand up and say, Professor Dalgley is wrong, there is no reactivation of melanoma after booster doses of vaccine. Clear the decks, then we'll know where we stand. So far, I haven't heard them say that. So other oncologists have contacted me from all around the world, including Australia and the United States. So being one of the leading oncologists in the world, Professor Dalglish obviously has international networks and is being contacted by colleagues from <clears throat> Australia and the United States. And after booster doses, these colleagues are reporting more lymphomas. Now, lymphoma is a potentially deadly cancer of the lymphatic system. You've probably heard of Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So more lymphomas being reported to Professor Dalglish, more leukemias being reported to Professor Dalglish, a group of cancers that affect the blood. More kidney cancers are being reported as well. And then Professor Dalglish says this, my colorectal cancer colleagues reporting a, a, an epidemic of explosive cancers. Explosive cancers doesn't sound good. Those, pertain, th th those presenting with multiple metastatic spread, the liver and elsewhere. <coughs> So what very often happens is a cancer will begin in the colon and then it then spreads to the liver. And of course, ideally, you would pick it up when it's still just in the colon and be able to resect it, get rid of it, treat it, hopefully just with, uh, with, with um, endoscopy. But if it's already spread to the liver, the prognosis is very gloomy uh, indeed. And 
if Professor Dalgleish is saying this, again, all it needs is the regulatory authority to, st to stand up and say, you know what, we've looked at this, there is no increase in lymphoma, there is no increase in leukaemia, there is no increase in kidney cancer, there is no, crease, no increase in colorectal cancer, and if there is, it's certainly not attributable to COVID vaccines. Just stand up, say that, be clear. It's not, I mean, if it was me saying this, then of course they could reasonably ignore me. But this is not me saying this, this is one of the world's leading oncologists saying this. And it's a question that should be answered. If there's no problem here, say there's no problem, clear it up, we'll all go home and we'll start thinking about infectious diseases and other problems around the world, uh, well, which there are many. So there we are, uh, more uh, active reactivations of melanoma, potential lymphomas, leukemias, kidney cancer, colorectal cancers often presenting at a late stage. Please, regulatory authorities, dismiss this, say it's rubbish, and, and reduce my anxiety levels. Now, Professor Dalgleish has got a good track record. He knew from the beginning that SARS coronavirus 2 contained inserts indicating potential uh, laboratory manipulation. He said right from the start the vaccine didn't stay at the site of injection. He said right from the start there was batch to batch variability. And uh, these alarms were brushed off by regulators, and of course, now. So, the excess death, the cancer, there are certain concern, jab the old jab. You know, people are always saying, but bigly, you know, yeah, yeah, believe the good, the gates, the population, well, yeah, the elite try to reduce the number of the people from, from 7 billion to only 500 million. Hmm. Really? 500 million. You people are talking like as if you are God. You control, <clears throat> just because you got a little control over money. Barely. And you think you got control over people's life. You think you can tell people, you can tell how many people that can leave, how many people that can die. When in fact, you do not. See, the so-called elite, they do not have this power. They do not have this authority to depopulate the earth. Only the Holy One can do this. And he is doing that. Okay? All right, let's keep on moving. A lawsuit has been filed against the Doubletree Hilton Hotel. Oh, That's boy. where this beautiful eight-year-old girl died in the pool. Attorneys provided an update this morning, and Fox 26's Jonathan Mejia was at that press conference joining us live now from Northwest Houston with what the family is demanding, Jonathan. This has been a tragedy for the family of eight-year-old Aaliyah Heiko. Now, police say her body was sucked into a hole by the pool here at this Doubletree Hilton Hotel, which is right behind me. It's why attorneys are looking for justice. They're filing a lawsuit to the hotel and the local property owner. We are seeking justice for Aaliyah because uh, this could have been avoidable. Everybody knows this could have been avoidable. Aliyah Heiko and her family rented a room at the Doubletree Hotel in Northwest Houston to get access to the pool. What was supposed to be a fun pool day turned deadly. Attorney Richard Nava believes the hotel is at fault. There was an issue with the flow of the water, the backflow, and we believe that Aliyah was violently sucked into the hole that was about 16, 12 to 16 inches wide. Investigators say surveillance video shows the moment that Leah, her younger sister, and another relative were all together at the pool. You could see her. <laughs> uh, you could see them getting the other children out. And then when the 13 turned around, she was gone. So you could see her little head go down and never be seen again. Aaliyah's body was contorted when she was sucked into the Ooh. hole and her body was inside of the motor when she was extracted. They had to break up concrete in order to extract her, cut pipe. It was absolutely horrific. Oh, there was a lot of criticism towards good. Aaliyah's mother for allegedly not being present at the pool and she received a lot of negativity. But the family's attorney says that's not true. All the evidence is gonna point to this hotel ran an establishment with many violations. The pool was not in working order, and we were going to show that in court. 
Hmm. Oops. It's not what that I wanted to do, but anyway. All right, beloved. <clears throat> it's a horrible thing that happened here, but hey, great glory. Let's keep on moving. Terrible. Jim, two men have blood on their hands tonight, and the more we learn about their background and their alleged criminal intent, the more infuriating this gets. Residents here especially alarmed at how much violence spilled out on this busy road. Oof. Tonight, more disturbing details of the men now in custody. The cell phone video shows the arrest of the alleged killer. Investigators now believe two ex-convicts were casing a T-Mobile store on Mott Avenue in Far Rockaway. Hmm. Monday night, two officers with the community response team asked them to move their Kia from the bus stop where they were apparently parked illegally. That's when the encounter turns deadly. Officials say they refused to roll down their windows. Officer Jonathan Diller ordered the passenger to show his hands. Instead, the passenger allegedly pulled a weapon on the officer and killed him. The mm. bullet striking just below Diller's vest. They have no regard, no respect for the law, for citizens, for people. Records show the passenger, 34-year-old Guy Rivera, has 21 prior arrests, including nine felonies. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. A lot of people are saying, well, you know, New York laws and things like that, they all relax and stuff. Listen, those people are making, they are doing those things in certain states and cities where they let those criminals, where those guys, they will get arrested multiple times and then they will just let them out and they will just do this on purpose. Why? They want the most violent criminal to be in the midst of all communities where they live at they would not if a guy like him did something like that they would have not let him uh, let him out that's why they let a bunch of violent dudes walking around in our neighborhood in our place in our community it's something like they did on purpose they did it once to destroy us they did it once to protect themselves because a lot of them are committing a lot of crime out there and they don't want their people to go spend years in prison, you know. But hey, unfortunately, that's what happened. This dude get out, and then there, there was there was a, a little scuffle, shot and killed a cop. He was released from prison about two and a half years ago. Police say his illegal gun and an alarming amount of ammunition were recovered at the scene. The driver of the car has been identified as 41-year-old Lindy Jones. Officials point out he's been arrested 14 times, incarcerated for a decade, then released. And just last year was arrested again on another gun charge. Yet Jones was currently out on bail. The heavy rap sheets for both men, the loss of a brave young officer, have broken the city's heart. Hey, Expressions judgment, of grief man. now grace multiple precincts. All night long, I couldn't sleep. It's directly on them. It's on the state legislature and the assembly. They need to fix these problems. The community is in an uproar, uh -huh. and, and we just pray for him and his family. Ah. Rivera, who uh. allegedly fired at the office, uproar, and... They need to fix these problems. The community is in an uproar, and and we just pray for him and his family all right well of course beloved they have to do this you know they have to bring somebody that look like us and say hey we're, we're all in uproar here you know and then we we we, we will pray for the family yeah well okay mm -hmm. in an uproar and and we just pray for him and his family Rivera, uh. who allegedly fired at the officer, was shot in the back by Diller's partner. He is expected to survive. The driver was not hit by any of the bullets. The city feeling the loss tonight. Uh, all right, well. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Oh, I had a lot of things missing for my beats ever since I transfer. Uh, there's a lot of things missing in there. And I don't even know if the beat will play. Is it? Let's let me see if it will play.
Yeah. Slowly fading away. Yeah. Uh. Glory to the Most High. Glory to the Most High. Yeah, I didn't know that beat was going to work, but but it did. Goodbye, officer. May you have great time with Pat Robertson, the Queen, and all the other scumbags, wherever that eternal sona is. Great glory. <coughs> See, the blessing is over. You guys are no longer covering on this thing. But then again, you know, this thing is opening. This thing is happening around the world and stuff. Somebody said there's a wildfire in Mexico. It's happening all around the world. But hey, that's what that is. Wildfire in Mexico. There you go. See if we can get that. Is that what that is? Two days ago. A year. Excuse me. Yeah. Um. Oh, great. There you go. Ha <laughs> ha. There you go. Let's read this. Strong winds drove forest wild fires now burning in 18 Mexican states. Okay. The Yucatan Peninsula, where the beloved brother Big, Big Judah went and activated the ley line. And now there's a wildfire going on over there. Okay. There's a wildfire in the Yucatan Peninsula. Okay. Because he activated the ley line. And if you would like to get the instruction on how to activate the ley line, we have, well, you have to become a, a member, Gravis or above. And we will give you the instruction how to activate the ley line. Is that, is that, is it here? Mm. Where is it? We had a whole meeting about that. We had a whole, uh, um, we had a whole, Zoom meeting about this. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 
Yeah, we have a whole we had a whole Zoom meeting about that, all right? Okay. The Holy One is sweeping those people of the lane. You guys need to go out there, activate the ley line. There, there was a sister that went over there too. In Mexico, she went to, uh, I believe, uh, Acapulco. All right. Let's put Yucatan. There we go. Okay. They don't they don't talk about it that much. A few people. Okay, well. A See? wildfire fueled by strong winds is threatening homes near Mexico City. 58 oh, right. active Mexico. fires are burning in 15 states. Okay, 56 active fires. Okay, listen to this. 15 states. No one active fires are burning homes near Mexico City 58 active 58. fires are burning in 15 states no 58 and 15 no one has been hurt fortunately but some livestock have been killed and homes have been burned well that's the point kill their food sources kill destroy their homes and sweep them off the land because the most I don't want to kill all of them because they have to serve their slavery you know shelters have been set up for any evacuees hello I'm Mark Brown okay so yeah, the Yucatan Peninsula, the brother went over there and activated. Remember that what happened in Texas, in the Texas Panhandle, uh, where where the fire was burning in Amarillo? Is that what that is? Is that, is that, is that, what, is, is that what over there, Amarillo? Where the brother went over there in Amarillo, activated the ley line when she was driving, and then now we got all those wildfires. And now remember the, 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 the beloved sister in Baltimore that activated the ley line? And then you got the bridge collapse over there. Do it, people. Do it. Do we have a bit here? Oh, people activate the ley line. Let me see if we got his. Go around and activate the ley lines. Don't listen to people telling you it's witchcraft. Wherever you go, just kneel upon the ground and kiss it. And tell the ancestors to return the land unto our people. Sweep the enemy off the land. We need the blessing back. You have the power within you to do this. And then I'm asking our brothers and sisters, wherever you go, pray. Kiss the ground and say the word. Number 10 in the, the tree of life. If you know what I mean, go ahead and do it. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, activate the ley line. Yes, that's what's going on over there. Uh, thank you, Sister Lily, that shared this with me. All right, let's keep on moving. Breaking news tonight, charges filed against an undocumented immigrant in the death of a 25-year-old woman in Grand Rapids. Woo. Ruby Garcia's body was found along a busy stretch of US-131 last Friday. Troopers say she was found in the roadway with multiple gunshot wounds. We spoke with family members this week, remembering her as a great sister, daughter, aunt, and friend who impacted the lives of so many people. Michigan State Police and the Kenton County Prosecutor announced charges during a news conference this afternoon. Our Marisa Oberly joins us live with what we're learning about this investigation. Marisa. Yeah, Michael and Josh, that man, Brandon Ortiz, Michael and Josh. five charges, including felony murder for the death of 25 year old Ruby Garcia. Investigators identified her as his girlfriend, and we just got some court documents as well, which show he admitted to the crime. Now, here's a look at his mugshot. The Kent County Prosecutor's Office arraigned him wow. this afternoon. <clears throat> and a lot of those dudes. <clears throat> They are doing those crimes. They are illegal immigrants. Of course, there is no uproar about this. There is no law that is being passed. Of course, beloved, we do know the reason why this is happening, the reason why uh, those, those folks refuse to do anything about the so-called illegal migrant or illegal immigrant because they brought them here. Their numbers are very low. This thing that happened in 2020 concerning Jabada Heart is because, well... It killed a lot of them. 
a lot of them are no more because this thing literally really take millions of them out. That's why they bought all those people over there. They didn't bring them there because those people just came here on their own volition. No, they bought them here because that number, they need to pad that stuff. That's what that is, okay? Let's keep on moving. Afternoon and says a judge denied him bond, so he remains in jail. MSP says Friday night, just before midnight, they received a call about a body on the shoulder of the southbound lanes of wow. US 131 near Leonard Street. When investigators arrived, they found Garcia with multiple gunshot wounds. A probable cause affidavit says Ortiz Ooh. White told detectives he fired at her repeatedly during an argument that took place inside Garcia's car, then dumped her body and drove away. Law Enforcement this Ooh. afternoon encouraged people in a domestic violence relationship to get help. Oh boy. Uh, but I think the key thing is to try and seek that help to get other. There's other people out there that are in your situation that can guide you through the process hmm. that may make you more comfortable and then filing a, a report down the road because we understand there is a lot going on. It's a relationship where you probably love the, you love the individual. That's why you're in the relationship with them to begin with. But things go bad, things happen, whatever uh. the stresses there are, and there is a way to break that cycle. But you can't necessarily break the cycle without getting help. Whether Well, that's false. Listen, especially for the 83, listen to this, man. Whatever that you think you went into your life, you thought you had it bad, you thought you had it wrong, comparing to the curse that is upon you folks right now, it's 10 times worse. The moment the Holy One, well, the moment the curse is switched upon you, there's nothing you can do. You can seek help, which you should. It won't work. You can try to leave the person. It won't work. Because that's what it was for us. And still, because the curse was over onto us. And now you can see this thing is clearly moving to those people, man. You can clearly see this. So... A guy was in a car with this woman, and an argument broke out, and then he shot and killed her. He shot her multiple times. You know, this is the rage, man. This is the rage, the the anger that, that's the super carried, man. You know. And this thing happened, like we said before, we saw this hundreds of times. It's not something that just burst out of nowhere. It's been built up. Most likely, he he threatened her before. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take you out, just like that woman that told this dude. One day I'm gonna take you out, and this dude ain't gonna do it. She ain't gonna do it until he blow. He, she did something unto him. There was this uh, couple that the the husband shot the the wife, stabbed the wife a hundred and something times. Do you know what it takes to continuously stabbing someone while the person is screaming for help? Okay, well, let's keep on moving. It would be from law enforcement or those other agencies. Now, we did learn today that Ortiz Veidt was in West Michigan illegally. In a statement, a spokesperson for the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency said he is originally from Mexico and was deported in September 2020 after an arrest the previous month for some misdemeanor driving offenses. They do not know when or how he got back into oh, the country, great. but said that they are working to learn those details. Court records do show that Ortiz Veidt's criminal record in Michigan dates back to 2017. And we have much more about that on our website at fox17online.com. All right, let's keep on moving. The Rockford community is stunned as a calm Wednesday afternoon on the city's southeast side turns tragic. Police say a man attacked several residents in the area. Police confirm four people are dead and five others hurt in the attack. We also know that four people involved went to OSF St. Anthony Medical Center. One of the victims is a mail carrier for the U.S. Post Office. Hmm. Around 1.15 this afternoon, first responders were called to the 2300 block of Home Street for a medical call. Officials say after that, additional units, including the police department, were called to the scene. Rockford Police Chief Carla Red says this incident is multi-jurisdictional with the Winnebago County Sheriff's Department and federal officials joining the investigation. 
So far, we know one person is in police custody at this time and being interviewed by detectives. Investigators don't believe there are any other suspects at this time. This attack comes just days after an 18 year old man was killed in a stabbing incident at an area Walmart Sunday. Mm -hmm. Rockford Mayor Tom McNamara says like true Rockfordians, organizations and community members are coming forward to support one another. I think like most Rockfordians just totally shaken by uh, this act of violence and the impact that it's having now on multiple families' lives. Uh, so I'm, certainly my prayers are with them uh, mm. as they're just beginning to deal with what will be really difficult days and weeks ahead. Um, we'd like to also say please avoid this area at this time. Police are investigating. They don't want any extra people in the area. If you or anyone you know is in need neighborhood should have to endure this kind of uh, atrocity. Standing hand in hand, local leaders, law enforcement and community members try to find a path to healing as they mourn the lives lost and other lives changed forever. A vigil was held near the southeast Rockford neighborhood where tragedy struck Wednesday to honor the lives of those killed and injured. Prayers were shared from multiple religious leaders across the region. Hmm. Rockford Mayor Tom McNamara shared a message of moving forward together. He says among the crowd this afternoon, he saw people with different political ideologies, religions, and races, skin but color. overall yeah, he saw Rockford color. coming together. Skin color, we need yeah. to ensure that they, they have to put the knee, I mean, enlarge this, you know, put a Negro that just look like us standing over there and then make sure that, you know, he's there saying black folk, we need you. We, we, we need your ass there. You know, put another Negro in the hoodie in the back, you know. We need to come together, you know. These dudes going around and rampaging and stabbing people, man. We need your prayer. That we are staying together moving forward. <laughs> being knocked down, if you're from Rockford, I mean, the news folks don't get it, but being knocked down is nothing new. Right. But getting back up is nothing new either. Yeah. Oh, We've always gotten back up. Ah! That's their little pep talk. They always got back up. First of all, you never be knocked down. You trip, you fall. You got back up. You, you thought, you, you, you said, well, somebody knocked me down. No, you trip, you fall. That's what always happened to 83. But once the Holy One knocked you down, which it did now, you won't be able to get back up. We got back up. <laughs> it took us years. Took us years. We got back up, but you won't. The victims who were killed are 63 year old Ramona and 23 year old Jacob Schubach, a mother and okay. son. Fifth mother and son, okay, Jacob and Ra Ramon, Ramon, Ramona, you know, they, they die mother and son, man, you know, you, your mother die. And your son die, your wife die, your son die, your sister die, and your your ne your nephew die by some random dude going over there and stabbing people. And Jenna Newcomb, teen-year-old Jenna Newcomb, who her mother wanted everyone to know she died while protecting her sister and her friend, and 49-year-old Jay Larson, a mail carrier loved by many. My dad once told me to always live so they don't have to lie at your funeral. Jay lived, nobody's got to lie about how much they loved him. Nobody's got to lie about how good of an employee he was. He was just a light to the whole neighborhood. He was ah, like Michelle. Man, this thing is, <clears throat> this thing is all over. This thing is all over. When I read the story earlier, it's just some dude, he said, well, he's trying to give him a lace marijuana. I don't know, I wasn't there. And then he starts seeing people as devils. He starts seeing them as demons and he go out there and start killing them. He was the kind of guy that had a smile on his face every day. He talked to all of us neighbors. We were really close and he was a guy that would do anything for you if you asked. Among the four victims we mentioned is Jacob Schubach, who was killed alongside his mother. He's pictured here with his family. He spoke, hmm. or we spoke, with some of Jacob's friends who attended the vigil. So they say they've. You, you, you got this dude, I assume this is his father and mother here, and then he got killed with his mom. 
and they got killed to their, in, their, in their home, in the safety of their home. How do you take those 83 feel out there? Those people were at home. And some dude randomly broke in there in a suburb area and stopped them to death. Hmm. It felt numb since finding out their friend is gone forever. I didn't want to believe it. Ah. So I'm, I'm thinking it was a dream. Like, I'm, you know, I want to have one, have one of the vivid dreams that seem true, but it's not. To wake up, I'm thinking it's one of those, and I don't want to wake but it it's up. Real. It's reality. You know, it's devastating. The Rockford man who authorities accuse of committing the heinous attacks will remain in jail until his trial. 22-year-old Christian Soto was read his rights and charged. Man, that this dude is 22 and his name is Christian. And again, he could get, he could get off. He could get scot-free because, well, he's insane. He was under the influence of drugs. He didn't know what he was doing. Before lawyers with the state filed a petition to detain him. Winnebago County Judge Deborah Schaefer granted the petition and also granted the attorney representing Soto a continuance, which allows more time for Soto and his family to talk with his attorney. His next court appearance is scheduled for April 2nd. We now know more details about exactly what happened Wednesday afternoon when four people were killed and seven others injured. The attack, according to police, took place on several streets in one Rockford neighborhood on the southeast side. Soto claims his actions were the result of ingesting laced cannabis, a claim police are currently investigating. Winnebago County Chair Joe Shirelli asks everyone to give the victims families respect and space. My sincerest condolences on behalf of Winnebago County residents to the families. Um, it's an unimaginable what they're enduring at this point in time. But I want to ensure them and the rest of the community that we're doing as much as possible to always keep everyone as safe as possible in their, our Winnebago County. Okay, so besides that, there's one thing I want to bring out. NASA firing rockets to the moon during the solar eclipse. Is that what that is? There we go. Uh, it's, it's, what, well, no, wait. Well, anyway, um, let me, let me just talk about this. Hang, hang on. NASA firing rockets to the moon during the solar eclipse. No, wait, to the sun? According to Fox 10 Phoenix, when the total solar eclipse passes over North America on April 8th, the sights of the moon and the sun will not be the only features flying high above Earth. NASA is planning to launch a series of rockets to study the impacts the event will have on the atmosphere. <sighs> See if I have a video. Anyway, anyway, somebody, somebody sent me something where NASA wanted to fire a rocket to the moon. Hey. <sighs> Uh, try to file a rocket to the sun. Ah, <laughs> uh, boy. Look, even if those people got the fastest rocket, you know how far the moon is? Let's say you have they, they have a rocket or missiles that can fly at Mach 5, which means five times faster than the speed of sound. It's going to take them two days for this missile to reach the moon. That is to reach the moon. Two days. And to reach the sun is gonna take them months to reach there. That is if they can. Have you ever wondered why those people always said whatever that came from out of space, whenever it's dropped down there, it burned into space? And the thing is, here's the thing. How cold it is every time you get higher in altitude. Okay, temperature decrease with altitude and dry condition the temperature decrease about uh, five degree Fahrenheit for every 1,000 feet of elevation and snow condition but okay the higher you go the colder it get yet when you are descending you burn you should have been descend as a block of ice but you descend as a block of fire 
Why is that? That that means, therefore, if they have to shoot a missile or rocket to the moon or anywhere, let's say to the moon, the rocket would have froze, freeze in mid-air. That's what should have happened. And when every time they show you in the movies, whenever something re-enter our atmosphere, it burned. It's supposed to freeze because it's very, very cold up there. Super cold. Let me tell you what's, well, not what's actually going on out there. Throughout study, we know that there's a temple floating up there. It's Solomon built it. It's, it has a giant... There's a, a spirit that is, you know, hold this temple up there. They're trying to reach this temple. And what you're calling the firmament, okay, the firmament of the earth, this thing is made out of pure... They can penetrate it, and it is very hot. They can pass through it, and you need a code, for instance. Uh, Guardian of the Galaxy Dome. Let me see. Okay, yes. Um. Well, when you watch the movie Guardian of the Galaxy, when those guys are traveling, you see those. You see this thing. There's hexagon. Is that what that is? This is not science fiction. To get out of this earth, you need a code, and then one of them will open. You will get out. Okay, but if you don't have the code, you can get in. And if you touch the firmament, if you touch the the firmament, it will obliterate you because it's super hot. Let me see if we can find this clip. Greenland turned the animated series Manhunter Attacking Planet. Mm. Oh, there you go. I believe that's the... Is that, is that the one? Here we go. That right here. Distance. Salak, listen! Hell Jordan of Earth, no! Where's the try to crack the dome? You see, this thing is... It's built like this. You can't get into it. There we go. See? See that thing over there? The shield that shield this planet? You can't pass through this. Okay? The main hunter tried to break into the dome. They can't. Okay? It's protected. That's how the earth is, man. The magnetic field. Those people can't get out of there. Okay? They were trying to get to this planet. They can't. Alright, so how is NASA going to fire a missile when you got this thing protecting the Earth? Okay. And this is what they are afraid of. Those dudes, those angelic beings that is up there, the AI, whatever that they are talking about, okay? People are saying, well, NASA is going to send a, a rocket. They're going to do nothing. They can't do nothing. It won't reach anything. To go to the moon, you're going to have to pass to the firmament, and you can't. Well, Big Levi, you have to understand, during Jacob's trouble, the elite's going to go to Mars. They're going to destroy Earth so they can go to Mars. <laughs> nah, nah. They need to go to Mars first and launch a missile and destroy Earth. 
they don't want to destroy Earth while the Earth is being destroyed. And then at the last moment, you see those guys getting into the spaceship and try to go to Mars. Get out of here, man. You people ain't going to go nowhere. You did all, all your dirt here, and you're going to pay here. See, all the nine planets, they are habitated, inhabited. They got people in there, just like you got people on Earth. Mars have the Mardi Might. Mercury has the Cocavite. The moon has the Levana Heights living up there. There are people. There are 28 cities, or in other words, 28 continents on the moon. 28 mansion on the moon. Huge dome city, beautiful. Jupiter, you got the, the, um, the Zedekites live there. And the Nogahite lives and Venus. All of those planets are habitable and breathable. They got people there. All of them. So those people don't want, want you to believe that they, they, Earth is the only planet with lives. And NASA is spending billions of dollars, literally trillions, to look up in an empty space. There's nothing over there. And they're going to shoot rockets at, at something that is... There, there's nothing up there just to study that's a lie. Our family expanded universally, all over this universe and the other ones. So NASA, they, they can't go to the moon. They can't go to Mars. They can't go anywhere. Those people are going to stay here and suffer whatever that they need to pay for. We can. They can't. Let's keep on moving. Shares for former President Donald Trump's social media app, Truth Social, are soaring. They opened Monday at almost $50 a share and yesterday at nearly $71 a share. The value of Trump's stake in the company could be worth as much as $6 billion. He cannot sell his shares for at least six months. The former president is also selling a line of Bibles for $60 each. Things are not doing too well for Trump, man, financially. You have to sell Bible now. You have to sell Bible to taking care of your legal trouble. And then that rhyme, Bible and legal trouble. I think this bit is missing something. There's something there, I just missing it. Yeah, a lot of legal trouble. Let me see what's going on there. Chinese company targeted in Pakistan suicide attack. Um, let's keep on moving. I was in Haiti after the earthquake. Um, I'd gone back and forth and I was visiting a friend. You, there, it was devastation and communities were coming together. People were sleeping, you know, under tents because they were afraid to go under their buildings because, you know, there were still aftershocks and so on and so forth. So he's like, let me show you something. So he drives me all the way to, you know, about 45 minutes from the capital city in this, to this resort, where it used to be a former club, club med. And it was all the humanitarian workers. I walked in there and it was just like food. They're doing step aerobics. There's the beach. There's the pool. There's like, and then, you know, I met this young guy who's like from Australia and he's just like, yeah, well, you know, we have to come here to help. And so for me, money for humanitarian aid, and they will tell you this, but most of the money that was the $13 billion raised for Haiti was spent in the Washington area hmm. with these contractors, all these people who made money off of Haiti. I was in Haiti after the earthquake. Yeah, and uh, they stole this money, more than thirteen billion. They've been stealing money and stuff, and then they will sit there and make fun of all people. Like, oh man, you guys are so poor. Uh, you guys can't can't do anything on your own and things and stuff like that. But you you are the thieves that are that stole all our money. Okay, let's keep on moving. Breaking news out of South Africa, 45 people at least are believed to have been killed after a bus crashed in the South African province of Limpopo. I'll take you uh, to some of the latest pictures we have here. You can see the just down in the ravine there, the remains of the 
the crash as the bus seemingly crashed through the barriers there and came off that road, off that bridge, into that ravine below. At least mm. 45 people killed, another person seriously injured. Is bus that thing recording? Botswana, it's believed. Yes. And uh, exploded on the floor there of the ravine. 45 people. Uh, let's speak now to uh, Heidi Jokos, a journalist based in Johannesburg. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. Just talk us through what we know about what happened here. It's unclear as to how uh, the bus lost control, but we, what we know is that the bus was traveling from Botswana to an area in Limpopo known as Maria. It's a um, Easter church gathering that happens every single year. Okay, so a church gathering, you know, and those folks all going to church. We have a brother that lives in South Africa, and he's in a member of a... Uh, uh, Patreon and things are not too good over there in, in South Africa and a lot of those people they they really don't care who we are they simply want to go to church and do their annual church things and stuff and then these things happen and then these things happen you know and, and they're still gonna keep doing it next year they're gonna doing it well that, that is if they have a next year okay well let's keep on moving man the government now extending a state of emergency and Caribbean leaders calling an emergency meeting Monday for what they call a, quote, dire situation. And tonight, ABC News speaking to the man behind it all, gang leader Jimmy Cherissier, known as Barbecue. He says the first step in the fight is to overthrow Ariel Henry, and then we start the real fight against the corrupt oligarchs and politicians. The unelected U.S.-backed Henri took charge when President Jovenel Moïse was assassinated two and a half years ago. Poverty, violence, and hunger soaring on his watch. Now even the U.S. pressuring him to step aside. Barbecue is Haiti's most notorious gang leader, a former police officer responsible for an explosion of violence. Even if Henri steps down, it's not clear who takes over or when new elections would take place. In the meantime, hospitals closed. Thousands of criminals have been freed. Access to food or clean water increasingly scarce. The government now extending a state of emergency and Caribbean leaders calling an emergency meeting Monday for what they call a, quote, dire situation. Ah, you guys want Atlantis so bad, man. You want to get into our temple. Tortuga Island. What thought you got so bad? Remember when you when they said Kanye West over there? There you go. You want thought you got so bad? Remember when they bought Kanye West over there? This is this is Kanye West and the former president. That was three years ago. You guys trying to take. Atlantis, Tortuga. Well, the temple, one of it that is over there. You couldn't. Brutalizing our people. We have no help. Nobody wants to take us in except for a few people. We've been humiliated. You just swagger all our wealth and give it to the Dominican Republic. They are protected, they took the bag. That's why nothing ever happened in the Dominican Republic because they took the bag. And we are despised worldwide. All of our brethren. Nobody want nothing to do with us because supposedly we are demons. We do voodoo. We eat people, we are cannibals, we are stupid. That's what you taught everybody and they follow. You don't tell them what, what we do and what is this land and what's under there. Why did Christopher Columbus went there on purpose? You lie and everybody follow your lead. And they hate our people with a great hatred. Despise all people.
And then now because of what you did, because of the lies that you told, all those people that done those things unto us, they'll pay dearly. No one will escape this. None of you will. And none of you can. We give the mighty one great praise, great glory. Beloved, if you wish to study with us, join our Patreon. And that's how we get access to a lot of the knowledge that we had. Okay. The quantum technology testimony. And class will start again April 15th after, after the eclipse. And after that, we will continue with the art class. The book is practically done. We're just waiting for some few legal things, and it will be published in April. And after that, we got much more stuff for the nation to do, much more things to participate for the nation to do. It's time for our people to rise. And to do that thing. Saying this, beloved. Uh, oops. Oh, it's 2 p.m. Oh, boy. It's already time for me to go. Yes. <clears throat> Yes, it's here we go. It's time for our people to rise and do things. And we do not need the validation of 83 to do anything. What we're going to do is going to be beyond anything those people could possibly imagine. All I'm asking is our brothers and sisters to study, to, to, to show themselves approved. Let not a book stop you and, and bring fear unto you. The greatest honor one can do is to be what, what you pretend to be. And I'm asking our brothers and sisters to be what they are truly. To become what they truly meant to be. I am not asking you to follow me. I am not asking you to prove yourself unto me because I'm not God. Yea, I'm a God being. But I am not the ultimate creator. All I can ask my brothers and sisters is to keep pushing forward, pushing the envelope. Get out of the box. And when I say get out of the box, beloved, I'm, I'm not saying pack your Haitian, get, out, get the hell out of America because America is going to be destroyed and the rest of the world is going to be safe. That's not how it's going to go, friend. The entire world will be George. Is The entire world is being George right now. All I'm asking my beloved brothers and sisters is to keep on studying and practicing. Above all, practice. When I say practice, I mean when you learn something, especially from us, put it into practice. The fires that you see, the bridge that you see collapsing, they, those things are just not happening by random. It is happening because our people are out there doing movement. They are exercising. They are bringing the heat to the enemy. And we're asking you to study. Well, I don't know what to study, man. What should I study? The Bible? Oh, hell no. Even if you are a neophyte, if you are a preschool, I would not tell you to start with the Bible. I'll tell you to start with the book of Jasher. Then go to the Bible. I'll tell you to start with the Apocalypse of Abraham. Then go to the Bible. 
Should I start with the church? Oh, hell no. I will tell you to start with manipulation of energy, which is another word, magic. Any energy you can manipulate with your mind, with your hand, your feet, your body, your aura, it's magic. You have a something special within you. You are special. There's a special energy that is in you. It, it cannot be found in anyone else other than people that are like you. Look within you through meditation. Do a spiritual background. We still do spiritual background. That's what the book is going to be all about. How to make a, how to do a spiritual background. You want a spiritual background to know your powers, your abilities, and capabilities? Well, send us an email. The email is in the uh, description. Use your power. Let no one bring fear onto you. Let no one telling you what to do. Everything is out there for you, for the asking. That's why the, whole, the, the beloved say, ask, and it shall be give, given unto you. Knock shall be open unto you. Seek, you shall find. Because everyone that seeketh, findeth. The one that knocketh, uh, uh, shall be open unto. Do not let this Gentile system dictate your life. Oh, well, Big Leaf, I, things are so expensive out there, and I can't do this, I don't have a bright future. No, they don't have a bright future. Their blessing is over. Yours is just about to begin well i'm not planning to have any children because it takes three hundred thousand dollars or more to raise one don't do not ever say this let those selfish bastards say that those people that had the blessing they effed it out that's the problem we will have many children many wives many concubines we'll have all of that don't let those people coming over there and telling you what to do well, you better, you better humble yourself, get a tiny house, and live the van life. Oh, hell no. You ain't going to tell us what to do. Oh, okay, yeah. No, 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 no. All right. So, you ain't going to tell us what to do. The most I did not create the earth for you to live in a 400 square feet. Well, 400 feet or, the, or on a 10 square feet home. The entire earth is yours. Travel. Go around. See the people. Enjoy the blessing just like they enjoy theirs. And they have nothing to tell us about it. Personally, you may see that I have refrained of doing those huge events when they happen and things because it is done there's nothing i personally can say that will stop this that will slow this down it's done the whole thing about putin and the whole business of well, you know, black christ and stuff like that i have nothing to say about this is it right I don't know. Is it wrong? Like I told you, I don't know. But one thing I do know, beloved, it is done. It's just a matter of time. We're already in 2024. By next week, uh, today is the 29th. Let's see. By next Friday will be the 5th. By next Monday will be the, the 8th, the new moon. That's when the thing going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to be good. Around like November 2024, you'll see. All I'm asking our beloved is to rest. Let nothing bother you. And then when we come back in April the 15th, we will come back with the grueling fast, the martinet diet, with the homeworks and everything. We keep on moving and let those people bask in their own sorrow. I say shalom. 
get your quantum computer, your crystal quartz. This thing, when it goes down, so we can communicate. Great glory to the mighty one.